I hate to think of all the whiskey I've drunk in this house, Elizabeth. I hate to think of all the bills you've never sent. Don't do that. Oh, here's the pills for your rheumatism. They won't do your rheumatism much good, but they'll certainly make you sleep. Now, one at a time, be careful, they're extra strong. I'm extra careful. Relax. Come on, Elizabeth, what's on your mind? I think you know. Let me go. Frankly, he's upset and he's walking again. Still shares a room with Ned, doesn't he? Ned's changed. Well, that shouldn't affect Frankie now. It affects all of us. Everything. Have you seen this girl? I've seen all of Ned's girls. Well, what's she like? Well, they all look alike to me these days. Flat as boards. Bit got up, though. She was she's pretty enough. A bit too pretty, I'd say. Ned. We... We can't go out tonight, darling. What do you mean? Of course we're going out tonight. Don't argue, darling. It's always been understood that uh, we were both free at any time. I don't get it. I thought tonight was going to be something special, wasn't it? Sometimes he goes off to meet her, as bright as can be, then comes back in the depths. Bad-tempered, stubborn as a mule. We row, but that's bad for Frankie. Preys upon his mind. He's going back to all the nervous habits he had as a boy. I can see it every day. You mean you row violently? Yes. And somehow we manage along. But I haven't the strength anymore. And the work must go on like any other farm. Ned's always been such a tireless strength to Frankie. He's a good farmer, too. Ask any of the farmhands how he treats them when the mood fits. Frankie, too. That's one thing I won't tolerate. Now, wait a minute, Elizabeth. Whatever this girl has over Ned can't last indefinitely. It never does. And as for Frankie, well, I think he's outgrown the problems he had to cope with as a boy. Sure he has. He stands on his own feet now, and you can take it from me, he always will. Don't take things to heart, so. Let the farm run itself for a little, you'll find it'll work out. And Ned? Brander. Ned, give it to me. It's a beauty. I told you that before, didn't I? Now tell me something else. Exactly two hours ago you were supposed to fetch me from the village. Brenda, I'm sorry. And you're wet. Yes, Frankie Halston. And the very next time you... <laughs> I'm going to use that Dutch stick. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Gran I'll be late for supper. You could be supping with us. Uh, me and Ned's going to the fair tonight. Supper ready yet? Won't be long. Frank, you'll be back in a few minutes. Do I have to wait for Frankie before I can eat? No, Ned, I suppose not. 
wouldn't do to keep Miss Gray waiting, would it? That's right. Always dropping hints, disapproving. You've got to stop it, Gran. If she's the right kind of girl. Go on. I don't know. You should. It's all your fault. My fault? I don't understand. Because you're selfish, Gran. Because I'm tired of working here on farm labourer's wages. Aren't you forgetting your clothes, your keep, all the odd pounds you borrow and never pay back? You said yourself you didn't want me to pay you back. Mostly because I don't like the idea of your borrowing. I set no store by money for myself. It's easy to say that now. Ned, why don't you bring Miss Gray here? We've got to meet sometime, especially if you intend to marry. I do know she wants to marry me, the farm labourer. You've never been ashamed of working on the farm before. Whoever this girl is, you've certainly set her on a pedestal. If I don't, somebody else will. And I'm not going to lose her. No. It's when you're young you need money. You can do precious little without it. We've always managed well enough. But it's my work on the farm that brings it in, isn't it? I've worked hard all my life and saved, so that both you boys will be provided for. It'll all belong to you and Frankie when I die. When? I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean it. Between you, you've got me all at sixes and sevens. Sunday tomorrow. We are going fishing, aren't we, Ned? Yes. Yes, of course. You sure, Ned? I don't mind about... about tonight. Only don't make promises. Because then you just go and break them. If you don't make promises, then it doesn't matter. I didn't promise anything tonight. Yes, you did. You promised you'd take Frankie to the fair. Listen, both of you, I promise nothing. I'll go where I like, when I like, and I won't be dictated to. And I won't allow you to use that tone of voice while you're in my house. And I won't stand for you giving me orders. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. Johnny.
Bye, Jim. Bye, Ned. Frankie, is that you, Frankie? Go back to sleep, Brian. Frankie's all right. But I heard someone moving about. No, you didn't. Did I wake you, Ned? Yes, but that's all right. Frankie's sleeping. Now you go back to sleep. again, always, yet I know it's Ned. Upstairs, Frankie. You, Ned. Yes, Graham. Why aren't you in bed? You went without your key. What if I did? There's no need to wait up for me. I sleep better when I know you're home. There's a tray on the dresser if you want something to eat. Thanks. Any beer in the house? In the kitchen. But I wouldn't drink any more if I were you. Yeah, Ned. Thanks, Graham. Time you went to bed. 
You're looking worn out. You should have been asleep hours ago. You don't have to worry about me, Gran. God bless you, Ned. so tired she got downstairs. I shouldn't have come here, Ned. Why not? Besides, you're hungry. Grand always leaves something out for me when I'm late. You're spoiled. Wish you'd spoil me. Fancy a glass of beer? Well, just a half. It's bad for the figure. You've nothing to worry about. Your figure's all right. You and me, Johnny, huh? What's the matter? Don't you like it here? Don't you? You're very attractive, darling, because you've been drinking. Right. So have you. That's no reason for pushing me off. Isn't it? What's holding you back, Joan? Oh, a lot of things. Come on, let's hear them. The future. Marry me. I'll take care of that. Well, that'd be fine, Ned, if... What? Well... Money. I thought it didn't matter if you were in love. We could do pretty well here. We? It isn't your farm, Ned? Of course it is. I am the boss. Everyone does as I say. Me too, I suppose. No, you would be the exception. A maid, a new car, and trips to town whenever you felt like it. Well, that's another thing. I'm used to the town. I always have been. I couldn't settle in the country. Ned, I chucked my job today. But I thought you liked it. Well, I will when I have a beauty parlor of my own. Oh, I had a round walked out. That brings matters to a head, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Marry me. Ned, you know when Tony asked me to come over this evening? Oh, him. Tony's all right. The way he looks at you isn't. I don't like these tuppenny halfpenny pianists making passes at my girl. He has a lot of influence. So what? Enough to get me started in a business of my own. But I thought you said you didn't like him. Is that where you were last night? Sometimes I think you enjoy hurting me. Do I? I couldn't sleep thinking where you were. I bet you never lose any sleep over me. I wouldn't tell you if I did. How many times has he lent you his car? Well, you ought to know. You're glad enough to ride in it. And after you've dropped me off here, what then? Oh, I, I have to take it back to the garage. That's right. According to old Dan. What's he been telling you? Nothing much. Except that you call at the flats across the way and later go home by taxi. Well, I... To return the keys. That's right. You wake a man at two or three in the morning to return the keys and ask him to phone for a taxi, I suppose. It's a public garage. You're lying! Dan always takes the keys from you. You ask a lot of insinuating questions and, and then shout. You confuse me when you shout at me. I ask a lot of straightforward questions and you lie. Who's confused? Ned, you're being silly. Kiss me. What is it? 
They put their hands on me. I didn't. Let's go into the parlor. It's safer there. Is it the old lady? No. It might be Frankie. It's nearly three o'clock. I think you ought to take me home. Let's go to the other room. Ned, I don't like it here. Okay. Let's go to the other room and say goodnight. Ned! Ned Halston, have you taken leave of your senses? What is it, Gran? I, I thought you'd gone to bed. What's that girl doing in my house? Quiet. There's no need to shout. It's Miss Gray. She forgot her key. I, I thought you wouldn't mind if we put her up on the parlor sofa. You did say you wanted to meet her, didn't you? I wanted to meet her to see if she was a suitable wife for you. Now I know she isn't. You know nothing of the kind. Look at the time, Ned. No decent girl would do such a thing. Take her back to where she belongs. She'll go when I want her to go. She's gone, Ned. You'll be sorry for this. I'll never forgive. Never. <laughs> and do we do this every time? Do what, Frankie? Well, you walk all the way home with me and then... I have to come back all the way with you. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Trigger! I'll quiet me. Trigger! Come on! Come on, you rascal! Come on, Trigger! Come here! Come on! Now, uh, settle down. Come on! Where's the whole farm? He's too fierce. Let anyone near him except you. Uh, he can't get out. You be careful. Don't you take too many risks for them. There's something I want to tell you, John. Yes, dear. Yeah. About last night, I... It's my farm. Like I've always said. What about the old lady? Gran's leaving with Frankie. She's too old. Neither of them are fit to run the farm anymore. Frankie walks me sleep most of the time. They're both going. Give you my word. I'd like you to get that business right away, tomorrow. Then come back here. There's a lot of things we can settle, John. But first, I want a decision. Now, tonight. There's lots we have to talk over. If you'd like to put on your coat, we can go for a drive. If you want to go back inside, that's okay, too.
Frankie, open up. It's Jed. Ned. Frankie. What's the trouble, man? What is it? Trigger's loose. The lock's gone from Trigger's pen. Kill an horse. Two of them gored. Clean through. Get some clothes on and come on down. Frank is in the wet. He's been walking again. He must have gone to trick his pen and then come back to bed. That boy's mad. That'll do, Jed. You're going back to bed. set him free. Then you killed him. Now try and get some sleep. We'll talk about it in the morning. Where is he? Upstairs. Perhaps I can take something up to him. Better leave him alone, Mrs. Rumble. Come and sit down, Frankie. I've had to take your knife away. The other night you walked with it. I found you outside Grand's door. And after last night, I... I'll get you some fresh tea. returned yet? No, dear, not yet. Tell Frankie I called again. I have to go now. Of course I will, dear. Good night, Brent.
Want something to eat, Frankie? Not for me, Matt. You must be tired. We've had a good day. Go on upstairs to bed, Frankie. You won't be long, will you, Ned? Of course not. Naturally, Gran's upset. I didn't tell her about the knife. I took away the one I gave him. He, he's got a collection of knives, isn't he? He got rid of those himself. But last night he had one of the kitchen knives. If he went into Gran's room with that, she couldn't handle him. It's been difficult for me at times. You see, he lied to me last night. If you spoke to him, he'd tell you the truth. He said he wanted to come and see you, then changed his mind. Wanted me to take him away from the farm for a day. The fact that he remembers some things and not others must be very frightening for him, Ned. I'd say he was desperately unhappy. I could put some kind of lock on the door. But that's what they do to lunatics, isn't it? I couldn't do that to Frankie. I think you did the right thing by taking him out. I, I suggest you do it for the next couple of days. Keep an eye on him at night. And then I'll come and see you. I'll do my best. I'm relying on you, you know, Nick. I know. Who is he? I know. But I've got to sleep sometime. Have another drink. How's Miss Gray? She's gone away. Good. Well, maybe things will turn out all right. Anyway, I'll see you again in a couple of days. Hand me my Bible, Frankie. I'll read a little before I go to bed. Do you know, I'm too tired to read. Too tired to sleep. Be a good boy and fetch me those tablets Dr. James brought. Where are they? Top shelf in the kitchen. Come on, Grant. Strong. You've been reading that old Bible ever since I can remember. Don't you ever come to the end of it? Very often. I come to the end of a chapter. <laughs> what then, Gran? Then I start afresh just in case I've missed something. And I always have. Mm. He leadeth me to green pastures. Makes me think of our meadows, Frankie. No. There's never been a book to equal this one. To bed, to bed, says so sleepyhead. Dally a while, so slow. Put on the pot, says so greedy guts. Let's up. Before we go. <laughs> That's right, Frankie. Always be ready to laugh. I want you to be happy. I want that more than anything. Ask Ned to lock up with you. Oh, 
Oh, it's you, Ned. You kept me a fright. I was going into the kitchen to get some hot milk to make me sleep. I'll get some for you, Frankie. Oh, I had some with Gran. There's plenty in the saucepan, though. I hope you didn't tell Gran anything about walking. Promise not to, Nat. After I told you about it. How was Gran tonight? Dead beat. Too tired to sleep, she said. She had to take some of those tablets. Frankie, and you'll sleep the clock round. Will I, Ned? I'm sure of it. Thank you. means nothing to old people. They've had everything they've wanted out of this world and they're glad to get into the next. Can you hear me, Frankie? Can you hear me, Frankie? They know when they've finished here, there's something better waiting for them. There'll be no more pain. No more worry. First, then knock up.
Doctor. The news only just reached me. I was over at House's farm. It was terrible. Terrible. There was a police up the stairs in Frankie's room. No one else was with himself at all. First the lad was calm enough. Washing his hands he was. The police told him to hurry. And at that he, he seemed to go clean daft. He snatched the knife from off the bed and threw it out of the window. Then he turned to run out of the room and the police grabbed him. They were struggling on the landing. Frankie was shouting. They were fighting and then he broke away and ran off across the field. I'm not afraid, Frankie. The police have just left Jed's cottage. It's no use running away. It's bad feeling in the village. Tom Harry's and his crowd have been drinking. They're out looking for you. If they find you here, they'll stop at nothing. Jed says you didn't do it, Frankie. Dr. James has gone to the farm to see Ned. Ned can't do anything. Tired, you? Have a drink. I wouldn't drink any more if I were you. Mind if I come in? Hello, Doc. What are you doing here at this late hour? Have a drink. No, thank you. Any news of Frankie? None. You know, it's late. I didn't know you had company. There are one or two points I'd like to discuss with you, Ned, if you've no objections. Me? Well, uh, the inquest. You'll be there, I take it. That, uh, I suppose I have to be. Yes. And as it's early tomorrow, I thought we might cover the ground so that... It's tomorrow already. I've given a full and detailed statement to the police. That's enough, isn't it? That's right, Ned, as I read it. You told them that the first thing you did on leaving the farm was to telephone me and I advised you to telephone the police immediately. You were quite sure you omitted nothing. What are you driving at? Ned, my idea is to help Frankie. That's what we both want, isn't it? To make things easier for him. Of course. What do you want me to do? Let's go from the beginning, shall we? You say you locked up yourself last night, so there can be no question of anybody breaking in. Right. The alarm went off as usual this morning. You got up. Frankie was sound asleep. It isn't usual for him to sleep on, is it, Ned? No, but then... after what happened, I expect he was thoroughly exhausted. Ah, yes. From here, you went to the telephone box. I was the first person you telephoned. Secondly, the police. Right. Then how do we account for your presence here, Miss Gray? What's she got to do with it? I put the question to Miss Gray, Ned. Let her answer it. As soon as I knew what had happened, I... I phoned her, of course. Yes, Ned. You telephoned Miss Gray at six o'clock this morning. You spoke to her for 20 minutes. 
That was the first telephone call you made. And yet just now you said you omitted nothing to the police. You know, these questions will be asked by the coroner at the inquest. But if they can't find Frankie, we'd all feel safer then. A madman running loose around the countryside. Would you recognize the symptoms of madness if you saw them, Miss Gray? Did Frankie have anything to make him sleep last night? Not to my knowledge. Two mugs were taken from this room this morning. One of them contained the remains of a sleeping draught. A particularly strong dose. Did Frankie take anything to make him sleep last night? No. I don't know. I can't see what difference it makes. Anything about the tablets I left for Gran? No, I certainly did not. You never saw them? No. Where were you when the police were here this morning? I was here when they arrived. I then went to meet Miss Gray. The last person to handle those sleeping tablets will have left their fingerprints on the bottle, you know. The police have them, Ned. Good night. Ned. Have a drink, Doc. Gents, I identified the padlock and the key from Trigger's stall. He's told the police where to find it. It's under a bush, dry. There'll be fingerprints on that too, Ned. Jed's waiting for me outside. Get in. 